The first setting we're going to talk about is texture quality. You can't actually access texture quality in game. You need to be in the main menu and then click settings there to see the option. When you find it, changing it will drastically increase the texture resolution on various objects, graffiti, even tattoos. I recommend keeping this at least on medium if you want to be able to read the words on anything. I only recommend keeping this on low if you play on a very small screen like a Steam Deck. But VRAM usage does increase with higher settings. Crowd density actually increases your CPU usage quite a bit, so if you're running it on high and wondering why your frame rate is low, this could be the culprit. Try to keep this one on low or medium because it actually hurts your frame rate a considerable amount. Field of view just changes your field of view. I wish it could go higher. Sometimes I like to play on a 120 degree field of view if my monitor is very close to me, but I guess 100 will do. Film grain adds a very subtle film grain effect to emulate movies. If you want to keep it on, go ahead. It doesn't add or take away a lot. Chromatic aberration is a lot easier to see and is trying to make your game look like it was shot on an old lens. The effect is seen in the corner of the frame as a stretching or distortion. Depth of field only shows up in cutscenes, so I recommend keeping this on because you're not actually playing the game at this point, so you might as well have it look a little extra fancy. I'm pretty sure they just turned lens flare off because it doesn't really seem to appear anymore. I've looked at many street lights and the sun and I just do not see the effect. So keep this on or off. Motion blur adds motion blur to the game. High doesn't add a heck of a lot of motion blur. You see it more when you're driving. I always recommend keeping this off to have a sharper looking game. The vignetting in this game is pretty serious, so if you think your game is looking a little bit too dark and you don't really know why, I recommend keeping this off so that it will brighten up the corners of your game again. Contact shadows will add shadows under various objects to make them appear more grounded in the world and less like they're just floating above the ground. This is the second setting that I just do not think does anything. I tested many characters, many lighting situations, expressions, but I could not see a change in any situation. Anisotropy will make the ground appear sharper in the distance. It seems to max out around 8x, so I don't know if you need to go to 16, but if you're looking for the best quality, 16 is where it's at. Otherwise, keep it at least on 4. Local shadow mesh quality does need local shadows to at least be on to have any kind of effect, but it tightens up the shadows cast by artificial light sources. It will increase the resolution as you're looking and make everything appear sharper. Local shadow quality determines whether those artificial light sources cast shadows at all, and also seems to increase in resolution as you turn up the setting. This is a comparison between both on low and both on ultra, and you can see how much sharper it is on ultra. Cascaded shadow range increases the distance in which shadows on things like railings and fences appear. You can see that on low, it barely shows up, and the higher you go, the further the shadows are cast where cascaded shadow resolution will take those cascaded shadows and increase the resolution, making them look sharper. I'm not sure if this is super necessary because the shadows are kind of hard to see in the first place. Distant shadows resolution makes shadows in the distance much more prominent, but it's something you have to look relatively hard for, so if you keep it on low, I don't blame you. The difference in volumetric fog resolution can be seen around street lights at night. If you look at this clip in full screen, you can see the light really start to sharpen up and get less pixelated when you get to higher ultra. It has a relatively big impact on performance, so if you want the best frame rate, keep this on low or medium. Volumetric cloud quality allows the use of volumetric clouds in things like sunsets and sunrises. You don't see a really big difference between medium, high, and ultra, but keeping it off will rob you of some visuals. Max dynamic decals seems to be another holdover setting. 
I could not see a difference. You would think that the debris on the ground would disappear later on Ultra, or maybe the holes on the wall would disappear later, but everything seemed to act exactly the same between Ultra and Low, so keep this wherever you want. All right, coming into the big boys, screen space reflections is going to have the biggest impact on your frame rate yet, but it will also improve the visual quality tremendously. I do recommend keeping this at least on low because if it's off, the whole game just kind of loses its charm. Everything looks too flat and the neon lights don't reflect. Everything is pretty dull if you don't have this at least on low. There is a performance impact from off to low, but I think it's absolutely worth it for the visual quality difference. If you're thinking of playing on Psycho, you're probably better off with ray traced reflections, and we'll talk about that later. What's this, another setting that appears to do nothing? I could not see a difference on people, on vegetation. If you know where this shows up, please let me know in the comments. Ambient occlusion is another setting that will make objects appear more grounded in the world. It adds fake dark shadows around objects and in corners to make it appear more realistic. I imagine color precision differences will be impossible to see on YouTube, but I did see a difference in banding in the sky between medium and high. Was it worth it? I'm not sure. It didn't seem to affect my frame rate. Mirror quality is another setting that doesn't actually affect gameplay because you're in a cutscene in the mirrors, so keep this as high as you want. Level of detail also doesn't seem to do anything. Ignore the extra windows in the comparisons. I think they generate those randomly. But it also defaults to low when you turn it onto an ultra preset, so. Getting into some of my favorites. Ray traced reflections will add real time ray traced reflections to the game. This has a tremendous performance impact. So if you don't have a modern, very powerful GPU, I don't recommend having this on. But if you were to, say, compare this to Psycho Screen Space Reflections, you'll see that Screen Space Reflections has almost the same performance hit, but you have to be looking at the object for it to be reflected. So as soon as I look away from the sign, it stops being reflected in the ground. Ray Traced Reflections will allow you to see the reflection no matter where it is in the frame, no matter where your camera is placed. So if you want the most realistic, have it on. If you want the best frame rate, you definitely want it off. Ray Trace Sun Shadows will affect the shadows created by the sun, but it does have a quirk in that the vegetation doesn't seem to move in the ray traced version of the shadows. I've tested it in multiple areas, and unfortunately, as soon as you turn on the much better looking ray traced shadows, the vegetation stops moving from the wind in the shadow. But it has a much less performance impact than reflections, but it still hurts a lot. Ray traced local shadows is just like ray traced sun shadows, but for artificial light sources, you can see it casts much more complex shadows under basically every object. It will make the shadow appear sharper the closer it is to the object and will blur the farther it is away. This again has nowhere near the performance impact of reflections, but it does still hurt your performance. If you even turn this setting on, your frame rate is at least getting cut in half and usually more like 60-70%. It will totally overhaul the lighting in the game to ray tracing as opposed to rasterization and in some situations can make a very big difference in how the game looks. Some situations might not be as big of a difference, but I see a pretty huge difference in the way the shadows are being cast and the way the ambient light is interacting with the rest of the environment. If you can keep it on, great, but you can see how bad it's gonna hurt your frame rate. Talking about overhauling the lighting system, Path tracing takes everything we just talked about in ray tracing and combines them into one glorious setting that also adds more bounces, more shadows, and more lighting accuracy. Path tracing is one of those settings that will completely change the way a game presents itself depending on if it's on or off. 
certain situations in the game can look like a movie basically it's the same type of technology they use to animate big budget motion pictures so having it in real time in a game obviously is going to be very difficult to run you can see the frame rate gets cut about 75 percent if not more but the difference is huge. Street lights, street signs, every light source, every shadow, the reflection differences, everything is so much more accurate and so much more atmospheric with it turned on, but it is essentially impossible to run without some kind of upscaling help. So as you can see by the graph, you're not gonna be running this one anytime soon without DLSS of some kind but we'll talk about that now. The new version of DLSS is nothing short of incredible. I don't know why it gets such a bad rap, I guess because people don't like AI these days, I get that. But when you're playing max settings with path tracing at 200 frames per second, and you basically notice no difference in quality, that is something that's essentially absurd to me. You can see by this clip I'm moving the camera around a ton to try to get as much artifacting as I can. This is completely maxed out. The same settings that we were just looking at that was giving me not even 35 frames per second is now giving me a full 200 and it feels that way. So if you can use it I do recommend frame generation. That's not to say that DLSS and frame generation are absolutely perfect, but it definitely beats 30 frames per second. So we'll hit the settings with some optimization tips, basically just going through and trying to get you the most playable game without sacrificing every bit of image quality. This is really geared toward frames per second, so feel free to turn things higher if you have more to spare. But quick presets, I like to skip those. Resolution scaling, I do recommend keeping DLSS on basically quality or balanced. Anything below that is rough. If you use AMD, you can use their version of it. Texture quality, got to keep that on medium to be able to at least read the graffiti or tattoos on people. Ray tracing, you're going to want that stuff off if you want any kind of playable frame rate. Crowd density, keep it on low for the best frames. Field of view, basically all the post-processing stuff you can keep wherever you want. It won't make too big of a difference in frame rate. Contact shadows, keep those on. Improved facial lighting geometry, doesn't do anything. Anisotropy, keep it on four or eight, maybe 16. Local shadow mesh quality and local shadow quality, both on medium if you want them to show up. Cascaded shadow range, you can keep on medium as well as the resolution. Distance shadows resolution, you want on low. Volumetric fog resolution, definitely under medium for frame rate purposes. It does hurt your frame rate pretty considerably. Volumetric cloud quality, keep it on medium to at least be able to see them and experience that part of the game. Max dynamic decals, low is fine. It doesn't seem to matter at all. Screen space reflections quality, keep that on low so that you do get reflections, but as soon as you get medium or high, you know your frame rate's gonna suffer. Do not play it on Psycho. Subsurface scattering quality, low, medium, doesn't seem to matter. Ambient occlusion, keeping it on low adds a lot to the game. Color precision, medium's fine. Mirror quality, keep it on high. Level of detail, doesn't seem to matter. So these are some optimized settings. Hopefully this gets you closer to a playable frame rate if you've been struggling. These are the settings that seem to not really impact too much. So if you want your game to be better looking, turn it up obviously, but as the frame per second optimized settings stand, the game looks much, much better and it doesn't significantly hurt your performance. Thanks so much. Catch me on Twitch, follow me on YouTube, subscribe, all that jazz. Have a good one. See you guys on the next one. Goodbye.